Who is Mystery Babylon? A lot of people have written books about America, even Islam being Mystery Babylon of the book of Revelation. Did you know that God told us exactly who Mystery Babylon is? He literally gave us a checklist. Would you like to see for yourself? Hi, I'm David Daniels from Two Publications. See, when God tells us a mystery, we can be sure of two things. One, God knows all about it. And two, we won't know about it without him. Mysteries are what Jesus called the parables when he interpreted them, interpreted them clearly for his disciples. Here, Matthew 13, 11, Jesus here, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So parables were spoken to keep stuff hidden from closed-hearted people, but mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, those are God's secrets revealed as much as the faithful are able to bear. God has already known and always known everything. So God can talk about things as already completed, even when they aren't for us. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17, it says, God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not, as though they were. That's why in Genesis 17, 5, God said to Abraham, a father of many nations, have I made thee, when he only had Ishmael. In the same way, God talks about the whore of Babylon as a fully established reality. All we see is one piece at a time, but God sees the completed puzzle, and he tells us about that completed puzzle. Would you like to see what eight of the pieces are according to Revelation 17 and 18? Here is a very simple list. If you want a more detailed answer, look at chapter 16 of why they changed the Bible. I've arranged the fulfillments in historical order so that you can see the development. Okay? Number one, seven mountains. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. In the 300s BC, the Serbian wall was built as a defensive wall around seven hills. The Aventine, Calian, Capitoline, Esquiline, Palatine, Quirinal, and Viminal. These became the seven hills of Rome. So Rome was called the city on seven hills. Number two, purple scarlet, and gold. Revelation 17, 4. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. February 15, 44 BC, Julius Caesar wore an expensive purple and gold toga to the Feast of Pan called Lupercalia. After this, all Caesars started wearing that expensive purple as a symbol of royalty and scarlet and gold. This continued right down into the Roman Catholic clergy, becoming commonplace in 500 AD. But nobody dressed better than the Pope. Purple, scarlet, and gold. Number three, religion declares itself mother. Revelation 17, 5, And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. 251 AD, Cyprian of Carthage declared in De Unitate Ecclesiae, the unity of the church, quote, He cannot have God for his father, who does not have the church for his mother. The religion of Roman Catholicism after that took on the name Mother Church. 431 AD,
at the Council of Ephesus, where they once cried for two hours, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Acts 19.34 They now exalted Mary as the Theotokos, the bearer of God, or the mother of God. And often, becoming Roman Catholic is said to be coming home to Mother Church, or coming home to Mary. I have some books on that. Revelation 18.7 The whore of Babylon says, I sit as a queen. Is it any coincidence that the Catholic Mary is also called the Queen of Heaven? Number four, her seat on one of the seven mountains. Revelation 17, 9. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Vatican Hill is not one of the seven hills of Rome, but listen to this. In 313 AD, Constantine gave the Lateran palace on Caelian Hill to the Bishop of Rome. It became and still is the ecclesiastical seat of the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. And that's not all. 324 AD, the first basilica was built called St. John Lateran. In it is a throne called the Cathedra, which is a seat or a chair with arms for the Pope. Number five, drunk with the blood of the saints, Revelation 17, 6, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Look at this list here, right here. 1184 AD, the Synod of Verona says you can burn heretics at the stake. 1215 AD, starting at that fourth Lateran Council, the Inquisition was formed. After that, does anyone want to dispute the millions of victims tortured and killed in the name of the Pope, the Mary Goddess, and the Eucharist wafer? Even if the killings weren't done at Rome, Roman Catholicism was responsible. This chart, by the way, comes from, did the Catholic Church give us the Bible? Truly, she was power man, drunk with the blood of the saints. Revelation 18.24, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. That's five so far. Can you think of anyone else that would be batting a thousand at this point? Number six, a city that reigns over the kings of the earth. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Walk with me on this. Unum Sanctum, 1302, Pope Boniface VIII came up with the Ex Cathedra Doctrine, that means it's authoritative, of the two swords. The spiritual sword and the temporal or terrestrial sword. Human government, that is. Boniface VIII, the Pope, declared, quote, In this church and in its power are two swords, namely the spiritual and the temporal, both, therefore, are in the power of the church. Then he said the church was the highest power of all. And, quote, If the highest power of all err, it can be judged only by God and not by man. What he's saying is that the Pope of Rome has dominion over all the governments of the world and is responsible only to God. February 11th, 1929, the signing of the Lateran Accords declared Vatican City as a sovereign city-state, so that it was both a city and a country, with its ruler, the Bishop of Rome, the Pope, and it's called a sacerdotal monarchical city because it is both a religious body and it has a single ruler over it. So since 1929, most countries of the world have come to the Vatican to have a private audience with the Pope. And Rome, of course, has its ambassadors to most of the nations of the world. Can anyone deny the massive influence of Rome in world politics? Think about this. If the government does not please the Pope, there's a bunch of ambassadors, take a look at that. If the government does not please the Pope, Pope. The Pope can then tell all his followers not to obey that government. 
And a government does not work without the people. So, world leaders listen to the leader of the largest religion of the world. That's to say nothing about the centuries of the anything but Holy Roman Empire and all the kings who either gained power or lost it because of the Pope's word. And now, since 1929, it is a city and a country. Number seven, nations fornicating with the whore. Revelation 18, 3, For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. All of Revelation 18 describes the amazing wealth and trade with nations of the earth. People make nice with the whore, get drunk with her, and then they let her pour out her wrath on the saints. After all, the only people going against the whore of Babylon are the saints. Pope Francis I just said that the only people who are causing the troubles of the world are fundamentalists. You know, Bible believers. Number eight. This is the last one. Amazing wealth and trade. Revelation 18.3 The merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. I used to have a problem with Revelation 18 until a friend said that what, that was what clinched it for him. He said, look at all the items listed. Right there are what the Catholic Church buys to make its idols and buildings and clothing. Donnie Eubanks, a former sister superior who became a Christian, once showed a Catholic catalog of religious supplies. Crucifixes, idols, prayer beads, all this stuff was made out of, take a look, right there. It was all made out of what Mystery Babylon got rich off of. Everything was made out of ivory, precious wood, stones, gold, silver. That's what she sells. And of course, the souls of men. Think about these people. Their souls are very valuable to God. The precious Roman Catholics need the word. I've just listed eight separate points in Revelation 17 and 18 that are clearly true about Roman Catholicism. I arrange them in chronological, historical order for you. Can, you can check every single one of them yourself. Look, send this video to your friends and ask them, is there anybody else who fulfills all of these? God knew all of this and gave us a heads up in the book of Revelation in two chapters. He told us what to look for before the end. Mystery Babylon has mostly taken shape. But something else still must occur. Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. You need God's holy and preserved words to counter this whore. By the way, what is the one Bible that Rome hates above all? The King James Bible. Quite an endorsement, isn't it? God bless you, and have a wonderful day.